Awesome. We are back with the Lead Up Podcast, where we connect with dope and diverse leaders to learn more about their leadership journey and how you can level up your leadership. I want to give a special shout out, as always, to Darling New Media, the people, the production team making this all happen. Darling New Media in Midtown. Make sure to go check them out if you have any podcasts or any media stuff that you want to get done. Check them out. They're super dope. Uh, and who else is super dope is my next guest, someone that, uh, you know, even before we started recording, he is a talker, but he is a, a talker with purpose. Uh, this man is someone that I got to uh, not only meet, but get to know over uh, a very, uh, how, how do I describe this journey that we were on together? Very intimate, interesting, impactful, I would say, in many different ways uh, through a virtual setting. Uh, but I got to know this man and other people in our cohort. Uh, through this uh, experience called NELP. And uh, the, my next guest, and I would say friend now, uh, Ray Harrington, a.k.a. The Mad Scientist. Welcome to the Lead Up Podcast, sir. Hey, what's going on, man? How are you, Renato? I'm great, man. I am excited to to do this. I know we've been talking about this for a while to just make this happen. So I'm glad that you can make yeah. some time to hop on here, man. How are you? I'm great, man. Thank you for the invite, by the way. For sure. But uh, sure. everything is good. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. And um, I, I think... Because uh, for those that are maybe listening to this right now, uh, I know we're recording on a, on a different day when I release this, but, um, you know, there was a recent tragedy over the weekend for those that live in Sacramento. Uh, so I did want to acknowledge that and recognize for those um, this really tragic and sad situation for a city that I'm going to love in, even more because this, Sacramento is not my hometown, but I've been here for the last seven years and it is a place I've met incredible people like Ray and where I would... Uh, establish my community uh, and then doing good work, right? And so just want to acknowledge and, you know, shout out to all the people making things happen right now for the families and friends and colleagues, uh, for those that we've lost. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that moment. Um, but kind of pivoting, I want to be able to learn more about you, right? And hear about your story. And and if you give us a, just a chance, man, uh, who is Ray Harrington? Give us a little bit about your your background, your upbringing. Hmm. Uh, yeah, who who is Ray Harrington? Uh, yeah, man. Um, I'm born and raised in Sacramento. Uh, my parents uh, they moved here from the when they got into the military, so I was born here and just grew up, went to school and all that, and just had a really good childhood. Uh, I have two um, two wonderful parents who both worked similar careers. Uh, they both retired in corrections, so. I had a really strong military um, uprising, uh, uprising, and so that played a lot into just my outlook in life and just the structure with education and all that. But uh, anyway, after high school, went away to college in uh, uh, Maryland, went to a HBCU called Morgan State University. Go Bears! <laughs> Shout um, out to Morgan State. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't graduate there, man. Um, homesick and the weather got the best of me, so I ended up coming running back home. <laughs> In Sacramento, and I ended up finishing up at Sac State. That uh, where I, up. Uh, yes, the years up, baby. <laughs> and uh, that's where I met my wife, uh, Natalie Harrington. And so that's where we've been ever since. I don't, honestly, it would take a lot for me to move. Uh, mm. I love this town and all that it has to offer. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. And I've got to meet Natalie and your baby girl. So I know uh, you guys got a good thing here. So excited to, that you guys are here. Um, I did want to hear a little bit more about uh, something that, you know, as I mentioned in our NELP experience, something that uh, in some ways, uh, in a funny way, kind of was a tagline for, you know, so many taglines that we had in our, in our experience, but choose violence was one of them uh, for, again, no context, uh, right, in terms of that, but uh, there's context in terms of what that actually means and, and, and how, you know, how that changed kind of my outlook in terms of um, you know, what does that mean for me to, and how I navigate spaces as a, as a professional, as a leader, um, as a community builder, but maybe I want to hear from the Mr. Choose Violence himself, but just <laughs> in terms of what does that mean for you? Maybe get a little elaborate on, you know, what that experience was and, and how does that play into your life today? Uh, absolutely. So uh, again, going back to what you said about context, uh, is the thing about choosing violence or choosing silence. And it's not necessarily, it's actually not at all to do with any physical. It's more about making sure that you express yourself in a way that is understood. And sometimes that can be done loudly. Sometimes there could be a lot of gestures or, I don't know, a lot to get to their point. And so choosing violence is making sure that you don't hold in 
things that mean a value to you. Uh, there's also, there is importance when times when you need to choose silence, of course, mm -hmm. and where you need to, uh, and that's more so to show grace and to try to get understanding and inquire that what a situation prior to choosing violence. But um, yes, I, again, growing up, I grew up in a household where my parents, who are uh, actually about to be married 38 years, wow. they very much so grew up, uh, very much grew together and they expressed themselves very much so uh, vocally as well mm -hmm. about how they felt and their expectations for each other and of me. And so I grew up with that and I have that expectation of people and mm -hmm. I consistently show that with myself to others. And it's, I just believe it's important to be transparent in your goals and your expectations and your intentions with others. And so, yeah, I'm, I definitely take the moniker Mr. Choose Violence because <laughs> you're gonna know exactly where you stand with me at any point yeah. in time. Yeah, and, and that's something that I appreciated about you uh, in that experience that we had together because as we all got to know each other a little bit more throughout this, I would say, what, 10 month journey, uh, there was a lot of trials and challenges that we had to experience from doing, uh, I won't get too much into it because, you know, it's, it's, an, it's a NELP thing, but uh, secret society. right, secret society, uh, you got to be a part of it to, to know. But there were a lot of things that we had to go collectively, individually, and moments that were uh, highly charged emotionally, right? And um, there were many times, you know, naturally, I choose silence. I embrace that. Um, so at times, you know, violence, choosing violence in the context that we're talking about, um, it required me to step up to be a little bit more uncomfortable and share what was on my mind, even if it was just off the cuff, raw, uh, but it was something to challenge myself. Um, so I, I guess where I'm going with this is for those that may uh, side or lean into that kind of choosing silence um, area, what are some ways that you feel, whether it's people that you've been able to hang out with or even team members that you uh, work with, um, what are ways that you've been able to help and support people to maybe kind of dip into the choose si violence side mm. and challenge them, challenge their silence uh, moments? I think the best way it's worked for me is that you let a person know that they're, they're able to be heard and that you're not gonna take, if, number one, you're not gonna take offense to what they have to say. Sometimes people who are looking to start to get into the journey of choosing violence, uh, it's difficult for them. And so yeah. the emotions might be on, on high alert and they can, be, they can express themselves in a way that might be awkward or uncomfortable. And if you, you can ruin that opportunity by taking offense or getting too absorbed into the delivery and not the message. And so understanding with people, letting people know where you stand and like, you can always come to me with a situation that I need to improve on or anything and be honest in that, that allows people to feel, feel comfortable and get the discipline of choosing violence when they need to be. Yeah, no, that's dope, man. And mm -hmm. I know you've talked a lot about, uh, at least in your work experience and I'm hoping you can share a little bit about what you do, um, but in your role or even in roles that you've had to uh, do in the past or even in your role as, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, right? You have your mad scientist business, which we'll talk mm -hmm. about later on. But I'm curious to hear, you know, about any decisions, any difficult decisions that you've had to make as a leader or as a business person. Um, and how did you come to that decision? What, what did you learn from that, those difficulties to, you know, level up? Oh, absolutely. So uh, I work for the state controls office right now. But prior to, I mean, I'm in the position of uh, leadership per se right now. But per, uh, before that, in the casino industry, I was a poker room supervisor. And so... I definitely had to be in a position to uh, make decisions and, uh, very, and stand on that. And a lot of times that looks in a form of choosing violence because you're dealing with parties who have opposing views and, mm -hmm. there's mo and there's emotions in high order. And it's important for you to not only be fair, but to be consistent in your, in your decision making. <clears throat> How to also translate into your staff is letting them know that you're of service. And that's the best way to let people know that you can accept violence, uh, accept <laughs> violence, is letting you know that you're of service to them. And I've always made people I work with know that I'm here for you, that I'm a mm -hmm. team player, and that I wanna put myself in a position to where you can be heard, and then I can assist you in ways that you can. And if I can't, at least get the resources to help you grow in that way you want. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's definitely where choosing violence uh, plays, a, uh, plays a big role. Mm -hmm. But um, as of right now, my job, a lot of time, it's uh, just trying to actually taking a silent role and mm. sitting back and learning the position, 
because I'm not in a position one of decision making, but because I'm the new guy on the team, I have to I take see. back, I have to sit back and learn. And so regardless of how I may feel about some procedures or how other people are treated, I have to first understand the culture. And that's something that I really wow. appreciate about those who choose silence is that they want to make sure they have all their information, even if they're holding emotions balled up, they're taking time to process everything in front of them. So when an opportunity to choose violence, it's going to be very hard to dismiss them because they come to you with facts. Yeah, man, that's so good. I, and I think I love that you mentioned that because I, I feel I get the feeling that there's probably more people like that, uh, at least in this season, maybe in their lives where maybe they're not in a leadership position in terms of uh, leading a team, but they are part of a team. Um, and, you know, um, they're taking uh, the direction and guidance of their leader. And so what would you say to maybe to them, similar to what you're kind of sharing right now of like, all right, if they want to make that jump to like, hopefully be a leader in the future, or what are some of the things they can do now to better embrace that culture or embrace maybe uh, as we've even done in a lot of times, this thing we call constructive criticism or feedback, right? We had to do a lot of feedback in our journey together. Uh, and I know sometimes for some people that can be kind of hard. Uh, they might take it a different way or the wrong way. Um, I guess maybe from your experience, how, how can you share in terms of constructive feedback and how could that help? How that helps people onto their next step in their journey? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a big believer in being coachable, and a lot of times that it, and I, I think that plays into my strength. One of my strengths yeah. is being a learner, <laughs> and I really like to take opportunities to learn and grow. And so, being coachable is understanding that you're not not only are you going to make mistakes but you're in a position that you're going to be corrected for the better. And so if you take that mindset that this person's correcting you for the better, that makes you more receptive to learning. And we all know the more receptive you are to learning something, the faster and more productive you are learning that. And so I would say to those, even those in my position who are looking to get in positions of leadership, do your due diligence and learn, learn what you can about the position that you want and see how you can play into that with your strengths. Uh, and not necessarily to say what you can do better than a person in position, but what is it that you can take the opportunity to do differently? Because uh, if if you're going to be a leader, the goal is to put someone in your position higher than you or get them elevated to your position. And so yeah. if you are a leader, what would you tell your past self to get to where you are? Mm. Man, you just set me up perfectly, man. What is something <laughs> you feel someone uh, or something you wish you had known about leadership? Like if you were looking back in your experiences, what is something you wish you had known someone had told you about when it comes to leadership? Uh, bide your time. Uh, mm. uh, in my youth, and even still somewhat today, I'm pretty impatient about things I want. Like I want <laughs> things right now when I feel that I need them. And so a lot of times I feel that I'm ready for something and then I want it right then mm. and there. And so I think you got to just take your time. Everything happens for a reason. And also do your part. Be prepared for when that time comes that you're ready. You can't just uh, just sit and wait and wait and, man, I want to promote. No, you need to put yourself in position mentally, learn what you need to know. And so where the opportunity presents yourself, you can't be denied. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the preparation part because, and I think you had mentioned it before, uh, again, in our NELP experience, but um, kind of bringing it back to that, I was just like seeing that as an opportunity, right? There was a lot of people that got, mm -hmm either invited or, you know, inquired to, to join or show interest and only a few, right. Uh, actually get through to like the final cohort, which we, we were a part of. Um, what was it for you to not only show interest, but to like, you know what, I'm actually going to do this and, and maybe, you know, take it serious. What, like, what was it about NELP that you're like, I want to take a chance on myself. I want to be a part of this. Like, what were you at at that time in, in space? Um, and what kind of led you to like fulfill, take those next steps for you? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think is right when my, I found out my wife was pregnant and wow. I felt like, okay, at this point, like I'm our, I'm third at that point, I'm 36. Like in my opinion, yeah. I'm an old dad. Like I've already <laughs> like, I've done the whole youthful stuff. We travel the world, do all that fun stuff. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, like it's time to go hundred percent into being a parent. And I need to really one work on how I can give back to the community. And figure mm. out how I can put myself in a position to be that kind of leader because uh, just raising my daughter to just for herself is selfish. She needs to see a man who's out there doing stuff for their community wow. and looking out for others. 
and just showing that we give back. That's that's huge. And I grew up with that. My parents were very big on growing and giving back, and they still are. And yeah. so even though I lost sight of that in my youth, being selfish <laughs> is something that I make sure I had to represent for my child. And so yeah. I knew about Nope some years ago, and I felt like, all right, this might be the time to apply. Mm-hmm. And as you know, during that whole process, you don't know where you end up. And so <laughs> right. when I got selected, I'm like, oh, man, I, I was like, they right. picked me. And especially when I got to meet all of you guys and all, all my fellow cohort, I just felt so uh, just out of place in a way. I'm like, these these are heavy hitters, yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, so inspirational and yeah. so poised. And here I am just like, you know, it's time for me to try to be a leader. Yeah. So. <laughs> For so sure. it, was, it was very humbling, very humbling. I'm still very grateful for the whole experience. That's right, man. Class 12, don't mm. sleep on us. Man. <laughs> insert but your, never insert your picture. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, you, people will get that later on. But yeah. um, um, I, I, I appreciate, again, the, your, your comments about giving back to the community because that's really a big part of uh, one of the outcomes that they, they expect for people that participate in this fellowship is to you know, join a board, right, and um, and give back to the com- community ultimately, right? Not just through the board, but other things in their roles as they continue to get involved and give back and serve. Um, what does what does that look like for you in terms of, uh, you know, even beyond NELP? Like, what does giving back to the community look like for Ray Harrington? Because again, as we just talked about in the beginning, there's a lot of stuff happening in our community right now. Uh, sad things, um, you know, from shootings, killings, right? Not just even this past weekend, but even from the church a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff happening, right? For a city, again, where people say like, Sacramento, really? And um, and it's sad, but there's a lot of good things too. So I, I kind of want to shift that narrative too, of just like, there, there are good stuff happening, but I'm curious to hear from you as someone that wants to give back and wants to be that role model. Uh, what does that look like for you to give back to your community? Yeah, man. So I dove right into that. And so I'm working, not only am I a board member for Light to Tomorrow, which uh, they go and help uh, youth specifically with young ladies and just help them raise up and teach standards and give opportunities after school programs to help give them opportunities to grow and not only compete for colleges, but just to, you know, just a higher quality of life. And yeah. uh, also I'm working with uh, one of my business partners. We're actually working with uh, Hawk Institute which is nice. in Sacramento. Yes, and cool. we just, we're just starting to develop a, um, a, digital, a digital space for youth. And the goal is to give not just underprivileged youth, but those who just don't have the opportunity or knowledge or access to technology skills such as coding and mm-hmm. digital painting and all that and give them opportunities to not only just freelance, but become competitive for college, yeah. learn a trade. And, um, and that's one thing we're really big on, helping youth uh, have access to other opportunities outside of college if that's not an option. Right. Yeah. And that's good. And, and you're actually doing it too, right? I mentioned you got, I know you got your shirt on every there too, with the branding for mad scientists, but uh, oh, yeah. talk, let's talk about that. What, what led you to, uh, you know, create your business and do these things. I know recently you've been pushing that a lot with shout out to Carmen with doing all the headshots, making you look yeah, very yeah. nice. Uh, but um, yeah, just talk, talk to me a little bit about mad scientists and what led you to, you know, really kind of, you know, outside of your nine to five, right? Um, kind of get into mm-hmm. that. Well, I was really encouraged by my wife to do something with, you know, whatever skills I had. I was, I'm, st- I wouldn't, I was, I'm in this job right now with the state, which is outside of my realm of, of experience. Mm-hmm. And so she's saying, you look all this time you've done with customer service, making cocktails. And <laughs> I've, and when she was pregnant, I yeah. really got into making non alcoholic drinks. And so mm. she's like, that's a niche you should really focus on. And so that's what I got an LLC, got started at that and started getting the work and found out that was a, uh, that's a market that's been very good to me right now. So I'm thankful for those guests and for those people. And also just during the NELP experience that which happened at the same time, just the idea of working with other people mm-hmm. and working and building your brands together. That was something that really that, that resonated with me. And so meeting people like Carmen, yourself, yeah. uh, shout out to Rosie and Rose to the occasion. Yeah, and right. just working with other people, just helping their business grow because these are also other people who want to serve the community and giving them access to not only finances, mm-hmm. but to uh, just to connect with other people, only do better for our community. And so I just, I got to, we can't just talk about it. We got to, we got to do something about it. So. No, and, and you're doing it. And uh, uh, the people you already mentioned are super dope. Um, and what is, 
something I feel like is not mentioned a lot, especially what people I've made that mistake too, of like, if they're have an entrepreneurial kind of endeavor or an idea, it doesn't automatically go to like, how can I collaborate or maybe connect with others to make it better? It's usually like, what do I need to do? Of course, there is something that you need to do yourself, but you know, when you have a team or you have people that will support you and uh, maybe fill in areas that you're not as strong in, again, a lot of that was part of our journey as well, learning about our strengths and how we can complement with others. I, I remember one comment you made, and this is something I think very early on, I was like, okay, I like this guy because he's we were, we were chatting it up and you're like, we're going to make a lots of money together. I'm like, wow, I love that he yeah. can see that right away just from either my character or whatever I just mentioned. But that is something that I think more people should be aware of because whatever ideas or businesses that you or projects that you want to do, it, it's at least how I kind of, if I have a quote, it would be like, we're better together than, you know, doing things on our own. Right. So, um, and I, and I see Absolutely. that you, as you've been talking about it right now, like the people you're connecting with and those opportunities are just increasing, not only for yourself, but also for them. Um, what, are some ways that other people as they're thinking about you know again the people that kind of listen to this are uh, uh, millennials generations th these are the next up and coming so if you were kind of back in their shoes what would you tell them right if for any ideas or entrepreneurial things that they're thinking about uh, what were some of the advices that you would give to them or kind of practical steps to, to take uh, outstanding question and what i would say to all the youth and in this and shout out to one of our other note members, Cole. Yay, yes, Cole uh, World. Give back, give back as soon as you can. Once soon as you find out you're good at something, start giving back. You might not make money right away, but that's gonna put your name out there. People are gonna see what your heart's all about. And as I would say, as someone who's not known, obviously just a really small business, having that rapport with people early pays off. It, yeah. it pays off immediately. You're gonna get you're going to get those contacts. You're going to get those invoices right away from the people because they know who you are yeah. and they're going to tell other people about you and, go, and therefore, but even more so just give back. We're all called to give back and serve. And if you have a skill of something you can do, start using that. And it's only going to pay off for you in your life. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Kind of shifting gears here and going back to a little bit more about development in regards to leadership what would you say, you know, whether it's from the NELP experience itself or just from the last couple of years or this recent journey that we've been on of COVID, um, what has been like the biggest change or development in your own leadership journey? What, what do you, would you say is like an area or areas that you've seen like, wow, like if you asked me a couple of years ago, this was not there or, you know what I'm saying? Like, what would you say yeah, that, uh, that is today? I would say I learned that a lot from a, a lot of you, a lot of you guys in NELP. It's just the really... <laughs> inquire inquiry and sitting back mm -hmm. and just really trying to process i again i come from a, i come from a family that achieves violence and a lot of time that means you're rea reactionary and so just as soon as something happens you have something to say about it and other people re and you respond and other people respond and that's cool because you, you know you're honest and out front at the same time sometimes you need to sit back and really process what's going on what is the pattern uh what can i learn from this all that stuff. And I, I seeing you guys, especially during our projects, really take the time to absorb and come up with strategies and really just, you know, take time. I really started implementing that in my life as soon as I could. Yeah. And yeah. it's definitely, it's definitely made me react so much better to different things on a business and on a personal standpoint. Yeah. In inquiry is something that we definitely uh, spent some time talking about. Mm -hmm. um and yeah for someone like me that does the a lot of processing and silencing um choosing violence you know is something that i strive to make a, a point to to develop more in, in my own journey especially you know being around people like yourself and other people that are kind of on that side um because it <laughs> it's needed right it it's it's i think it's something that as a leader you want to be able to have access to tools right a lot of these things that we are uh having access to or learning are tools that we can use, maybe not in this season or in this moment, but at a later time where, you know, we're in a new space, a work environment, a new job or a role outside of maybe our past experiences, um, those tools will be very helpful at, in those moments, right? Um, uh, kind of shifting gears to another, to another piece uh, on this um, leadership. In those moments when uh, times are hard, 
um, what inspires you to, to keep going? What are the things that are kind of motivating you to either be creative or kind of, um, you know, kind of stretch yourself a little beyond of, you know, where you're currently at, if that makes sense? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, because I, again, patience is always something that I have to be challenged with. <laughs> and it's just that in that patience, am I ready? And I have to mm -hmm. ask myself that, you know, you're so, re you're so, you're so impatient. Are you ready? Am I yeah. ready to make that move? If yeah. it happened right now, am I ready? If they ask that question, mm -hmm. could I answer it? Mm -hmm. And so that, that get that lets me know, okay, you know, I could, but let me make sure, let me make yeah. sure I prepare myself. Let me stay studied up. Let me just be focused and also just live in the moment. Not everything's about being ready for the next step. Sometimes just enjoy the moment. I, um, a lot of times when I do think about um, where I'm at in my life and where I want to progress, I can sit back and working from home, I can sit back and look at my daughter and just say, you know, I'm blessed to be here daily with her. I'm able to spend time and Bye. check in on her on any point in time. So, you know what, that's just enjoy the moment. And when that opportunity comes, you know, I was so, if I was so impatient, am I ready for it? Yeah. And so I would definitely invite others to just bask in the moment and and definitely look at what you have and be, and, and be thankful for that. Yeah, that's, that's 100% spot on. Um, speaking of the moment and I would say even future moments, what, what do you envision yourself maybe in the next couple of years, whether it's five, 10 years of what's next for you in your journey in terms of your own development as a, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, uh, father, right? Um, community, give, giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, what is next for you? What is the next venture or, or things that are in the works, maybe behind the scenes that we can see from Ray Harrington? Uh, honestly, I'm trying to put down on paper what I've been doing customer ser uh, community service wise to see where I can use, be used later on in life. I don't know where I'm going to be at five years from that, but hopefully using whatever skills I gain now and just, adding to that for something else or even continue with the same service. Uh, as far as business wise, I definitely want to be more involved with other, with, uh, with our other, um, other classmates mm -hmm. as far as working with them. I, that, that's, we all talk about the ones that we talk about business with, we talk about yeah. it quite often are yeah. working together within five years and becoming yeah. quite lucrative and then connect with other people and all that. Yeah. So that that's definitely, I, I see that actually being sooner than five years, but that's definitely going to happen. For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, we gotta get we gotta get that finance uh, group going, man. Oh, that's <laughs> the, that's already in the works, my man. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> so, and that's another point. People who are anxiously waiting to get a part of that, are you ready financially? If we're saying, hey, drop ten k right now, can you do that? Mm -hmm. If not, Ooh. what can you? What lifestyle changes can you make to get to that point? Or man. if you can't make lifestyle changes, where can you? Add, where can you add financially? Can you? Can you take in a roommate or can you change your living stand, uh, situation? Are you ready for that investment? Because that's that's the biggest difference from those who have the money and those who don't. They're ready to make that move right away. Mm. Okay. Mm. I, I love that you just said this because it's like you kind of – I want you to talk about that a little bit more because I think this is a very key moment right here for, uh, for people to really understand like this kind of mindset, right, in, in terms of preparation really um, because – as you're saying, this whole kind of even theme of patience and, and it, it's more than just time because it's not just time that you're waiting. It's time that you're doing, you're actively waiting uh, while doing something, right? Absolutely. Uh, whether it's building up your, your your finances or building up, right, you know, a, a, a blueprint, right, or, or drafts of, of projects, like you're doing something that's leading to that next step, right, or the final step to connect with somebody or, or whatever it is, right? Um, I want to hone in on this. Um what is, um, I guess, what is that, that preparation look like for you in terms of, you know, as you're talking to other people to maybe get interested for investments, right? I guess I'm just using this specific example as we're talking about something that's actually happening in the background. But for other people that um, have vision or goals to like, you know, buy a home, buy a car or pay off their debt, like what is that level or mindset of preparation that needs to kind of be better instilled? Because I think a lot of times guys will, or people in general will just kind of sit back and just wait for things to happen as opposed to make things happen, if that makes sense. Right. And and definitely shout out to my wife because she was probably the biggest assistant in me becoming the most financially disciplined I could be. Wow. And the biggest thing is just really like really checking, being honest with yourself with your with your finances, your living situation, and your cost and your living standard. 
And it, what, what is it you want to make? If you want to buy a house, you need to put it on paper. How much is it going to take? How many months are you going to put, how much money do you have to put away a month to make that happen? You have to make your goals visible because mm -hmm. it's not going to just happen by just thinking about it, especially <laughs> with money. It's, it's money's the, that's... I think that's the thing with the youth. And I can attest for myself, you say you want to put away a certain amount of money and then it's just sitting in your account. Mm -hmm. And so you live, you're living life. Things are happening. Don't get me wrong. Accidents can happen, mishaps, mm -hmm. but things can happen. And that money just gets spent. Everything just gets spent. And so months back down the later, that months down the road, you're not making any, any headway in your savings. And then you just see there's no hope maybe, or something can really mess with your morale and you just drop that. And yeah. so understanding what you need to make, what, understanding, taking the steps forward to get to that finish line, you need to know how many steps it's gonna take. You need to calculate that stuff. And if you can't, you need to find people who are able yeah. to help you with that. That's and it. that's part of the, And that's part of actually having a village is that connect with people in the weaknesses. If you're not financially savvy, find people who are, and then they can help coach you through that. And, and that's another part of being coachable. Can you follow directions? Hmm. And can you be disciplined to that? Because if you mean, if, uh, I have, we have a financial uh, advisor. And when they say that you need to make these kind of cuts, are you going to listen? Because obviously mm. they did the math. You can. You can do it. Are you <laughs> going to? Mm. You know? And so for somebody, you know, I may not look like it, but the person that works out a lot, yeah. it's when someone say does 100, do 100 push-ups, I don't see that as an issue. But put away $1,000. Okay, wait a minute. How do I do that? Wait, we're, no, right. you can do it. We know you can. We've seen you do it. You have the <laughs> But will you do it? And mm. that's where... You have to understand what what your is your goal is your goal more important than your than how you feel about it you know so man and that's, that's so and that's the thing and that's going to happen when you're going to want to invest and if you don't plan for investments now by making that kind of mindset now when someone like Renato says hey let's go invest in this mm -hmm. you have to just sit back and be quiet because you don't have the money you weren't right. disciplined all that time and you said you were ready and you talked about finances and investment but when the opportunity came you weren't ready. Hmm. Hey, Ray Harrington speaking facts over here, guys. I hope y'all rewind this a couple minutes and replay it again because, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely that mindset of making it visible, making it plain, calculating. Um, all of that is spot on, man. So thank you for sharing that. Um, as we start kind of landing the plane a little bit uh, before we get to the lightning round, uh, I did want you to, uh, again, maybe share where people can get in touch with you. Uh, I know you got some socials or just if people want to follow up with you about this mindset that you're even talking about, or if they want to connect with you just to follow and learn more about what you're doing, uh, how can they do that? Oh, well, again, I work with, I have, I have plenty of people who work with this much better than me. So if you want to find a financial advisor, if you need a tax consultant, any of these, I happen, I happen to be blessed with a lot of connections. And so you can find me on my, uh, on Instagram, on mad scientists, mad scientist creations. <laughs> there you and go. you can find me actually on there mad scientist creates on Instagram. Uh, and if you, and just, I have no problem connecting with other people I want. The goal isn't for me to get rich by myself. It's the goal is to help mm. and network with everybody. And that is one of my skills. And that's a service that I love is that connecting other people with people much more skilled than I in issues and topics that they want to help with. And so yeah. if you want to get in touch with someone with finances, reach out to me and I get you in touch with somebody. There you go. Or if you want to, if you want to get the bad scientists at an event or something, make sure to hit them up. Oh, too. yeah. You want, you want the cocktails. <laughs> right. Talk to me. <laughs> right. Cocktail, non-alcoholic, alcoholic. Yeah, alcoholic. do it. You find it. <laughs> make it happen. Any kind of event. For sure. All right, man. So we're going to get into the lightning round. These are questions I did not share with you beforehand. So these are all questions. First thing that comes to mind, that's the answer that you're going to share. I got about 10 or more questions. Are you ready for the lightning round, sir? Oh, let's do it. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start off uh, pretty simple as, as always. First question: Spades or dominoes? <laughs> spades. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Second question: Artist or song that is currently on repeat? Ooh, <laughs> uh, back times two. Benny the Butcher. Ah, yeah. Benny. Next Oof. question: Something that most people wouldn't know about you. What don't they know? Ugh. I tell just about everything. <laughs> this is true. I can um, vouch for that. Man, um, oh, I played the piano as a kid. I don't know if a lot of people know I, that. I did not know that. Okay. Next question: If you had a superpower, what would it be? Uh, 
Teleportation. Easy. Thank Been thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> Next I question. Wish. Most used emoji icon. Oh, the swirl the swirly eyed one. The swirl the you one the dizzy yeah, eyed? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's that's yeah. mine. Oh yeah. You are one of the few people that uses that the most. I do I, oh. I do vouch for that. All right. <laughs> Next question. More of a statement. You just won the lottery. First thing you do is what? Ooh, buy a new house. We Bam. need a new one. Ready to upgrade. <laughs> Next question. Person who inspires you the most? My mom. Awesome. Worst nickname given to you? Ooh. Toodles. I hate that name. Oh. <laughs> Toodles? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, if your life was a comic book, what would it be called? Mm. Black Summer. Ooh, I like that. Okay. I had to throw in the comics for you just to make sure. Oh, yeah. I yeah. like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, getting it down to the last couple of questions. Uh, biggest lesson you learned in 2021? Always be ready to pivot. Love that. All right. Last question slash statement. Um, every leader needs what? Ugh. Grace. Love that. Every leader needs grace. You heard it here from Brother Ray Harrington. Man, thank you so much for being on the Lead Up podcast. This was episode you, 37. Brother, man. Uh, catch y'all on the next episode. And thank you all again for tuning in. I much appreciate the feedback and the support. And um, yes, if you can support, you can find us on Anchor app or the Spotify. Much love. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Take care.